I recently crossed over 200,000 followers on LinkedIn and rather than using followers, I like to say amazing people. And in today's podcast, we are going to be talking about the journey, how it has been, what have I learned so far, tips and tricks that you can also use if you're trying to achieve this number. And so without any further ado, let's just get started. Welcome to the DFY show where we empower entrepreneurs, professionals, and business owners with valuable resources to accelerate your growth and unlock your full potential. I'm your host, Damilala Fenish Badmers, and in each episode, we will dive into the strategies, insights, and success stories that drive personal and business growth. Whether you're looking to level up your branding, master marketing techniques, or embrace entrepreneurship, the DFY Show is your one-stop destination for inspiration and knowledge. So grab your pen and papers and let's dive in. A big thank you to everyone that has been part of this podcast. I mean, it has been an amazing journey. We are currently in episode 7 and it's been a lot of hard work. It's been a lot of dedication. It's been a lot of consistency. But I think I'm really happy about how the journey has been because without you being consistent in anything, it might be very hard for you to achieve your goal, right? And so last week I couldn't record a podcast, but this week I said I have to do one. Last week I just wanted to take some time to rest because it was a very busy week for me, you know, working back to back. I just said my health is very important and I just took a break from last week. So this week, we have a lot of things in stock. Yes, I mentioned about 200k followers. Well, yes, we are currently over 200,000 followers on LinkedIn. And if you're still not followed, if you're still not connected, what are you waiting for? Just head on to your LinkedIn right now and follow at Damlala Felicia Badmore. So I get to share a lot of interesting things for you. And over the course of the week, I was ranked among the top 200 creators worldwide on LinkedIn by Farricon. And it's a very huge thing for me. And I consider that a very huge milestone. And I was also among the top 200 top creators for women in LinkedIn as well. And I think that that's a very big one for me. So congratulations to me. Congratulations to us for raising the bar, for being a part of this journey, for you being part of my network and me also being a part of your network. Also, I'm having a webinar coming up on the 14th of this month, which is October by 10 a.m. And we are going to be talking about ways that you can monetize your personal brand as we know that personal brand conversation, we can never stop talking about it. And if you want to really scale your personal brand, then this webinar is for you. So just continue listening to the podcast. I'm going to share more details about the webinar at the end of this podcast. So ensure you stay till the end. So with that being said, let's go back to our topic for today. It's going to be a gist. We're just going to be talking to ensure that you feel relaxed, pay attention, and we're going to be laughing. We're going to be sharing things that I've learned, things that you can also put in your strategy plan when you are creating your posts, your videos, and any other thing that you want to create when it comes to your personal branding. Okay, so as you know, or if you don't know, I became very active on LinkedIn around 2021. And like I mentioned in some of my podcasts that I studied as a photographer, then I moved on to personal branding because even photography and personal branding, they are all related. I mean, I used to do personal branding photography And then I moved fully into personal branding. So photography can be a part of personal branding because the umbrella of personal branding is very big. So when I started, I was creating content, you know, back to back, 
text post, education post, and I took myself online presence very seriously. And because I had a passion for personal branding and photography, I just liked when people have their photos all glammed up, looking very professional. I just went the extra mile to message people that, okay, your profile picture is not doing so well, that this and this are the things that you can do to improve your profile, to improve your online presence, and a lot of people listened. Then I moved on to being authentic. So when I started the branding journey, I was talking about things that I found very interesting to me and also to other people. So I embraced being authentic. That means I shared my real thoughts, shared my experiences, I shared my expertise. And because my post related with a lot of people, a lot of people were able to comment on it, repost it, like it, come back to it, save it. And because of how that post sometimes go viral, a lot of my posts usually go viral. A lot of people would see my content and then immediately click follow. So my page grew from there. I spoke about my faith being a Christian. I spoke about how we had to love God, how we have to be people of virtue and so many amazing content that a lot of people could just relate to it. And talking about content creation as well, I invested in high quality content. Now, when it comes to creating content, I believe that it's just what is what doing is what doing well. And to be honest, I sometimes lose a lot of sleep because I'm trying to make my content very interesting. I'm trying to make my content top notch. And so sometimes it might take me about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, one hour to just put up a very, very good content strategy. And aside from the strategy itself, I just create things that people can be able to read without having a lot of grammatical errors. And I also try as much as possible to add pictures that sort of suits the kind of message that I'm trying to create or I'm trying to pass across to my audience. I played a lot with different post type because you know that on LinkedIn, you have different types of post type. You have the text post, you have the picture post, you have the polls, you have articles, you have so many. And I played with every single one of them because I just wanted to know which of them my audience really like, and also to just give my page a different kind of feel. So rather than me just doing the same kind of post every single time, I just played a lot with different types. I also played along with videos and I added video captions to what it is that I was doing just for people to understand. So there are some people that might be at work and they wouldn't be able to listen to the sound. So I just put in captions and while people are at work or wherever they are, once they just start seeing the video, they can be able to understand what it is that I am trying to say. Next one is I was very consistent. Now, consistency can be a very huge challenge to a lot of people. And I quite understand because combining your nine to five, or even if you don't do a nine to five, combining your job with whatever it is that you're trying to do online can take a lot of time. I mean, there are some times that I get back from work and I have to start thinking of creating content for the next day. And to be honest, I sometimes would even sleep to like maybe 12 a.m. or to like maybe past 11 a.m. or I have to wake up as early as possible, let's say by six, let's say by five, just to put a piece of content together. And so because of this, I was very consistent and that consistency also cost me something. And because it cost me something, I was also able to get a good amount of reward for what I was doing and also my efforts. So I ensured that I maintained the regular postage schedule. Most of my posts coming from 8 a.m. to about 8.30, depending on when I make the post. 
I also usually schedule them using tools like Hootsuite Buffer, but LinkedIn also has an in-scheduling platform where you can just schedule your post and then it goes out automatically for you. So that sort of helped my posting schedule and it just helped me to have a steady flow of valuable content because I was very consistent with what I was doing. Also, being consistent helped me to build trust with my audience because they were always seeing me every single time. It's just like saying that you're going out in the morning and then you see a vendor that sells newspaper every single day in front of your house. There is no way that even if you don't notice the person in a week or in two weeks, once you keep going out every day, there is just no way you're not going to see the person because the person keeps showing up every single day. And so that is what consistency does. It helps you to keep in tab or keep you in mind in front of your audience and so for them to be able to know that you exist. And that way people will start building loyalty. They will start getting interested in what you have to say and also what it is that you do as a person. Another one or another strategy that I used, you know, in growing my followership is networking and collaborations. Now, networking for me is a big deal because I remember that when I started on LinkedIn, somebody reached out to me in my DM and said, okay, Dami, would you like to photograph my event? And I said, oh yeah, sure. And I went for that event, met a couple of people there. We were all from LinkedIn because we used the platform very well. We connected. I took the photos of them. I sent it to them. They started tagging me. And you know how LinkedIn works that if your connection, let's say you like my photo, your connections are going to see that you like my photo. And if they see, if they like the photo as well, they might probably just check out my profile and then they get connected. So because of that, my followers started to grow. Then I was able to connect with people as well. And that was how the network and the relationship with people grew from level 101 to about level 107, if we can say that. So networking and collaboration also worked for me. Then another one that I would say that really worked for me was engaging with people and that has to do with response to comments, engaging on other people's posts as well. The thing about people is that they like to feel seen and they like to feel heard. If somebody comments on your post and then all you let's say the person you use about four lines to say something insightful and then you should you just reply the person and say nice comment or thank you and then you leave you don't even add an emoji to it it's going to be very hard for the person to want to come back to your post because they might think that you after all you don't appreciate my comments on your post so trying to be friendly really helped me i tried as much as possible to engage with people like I was with them in person like I've known them for a while and this really really helped my relationship with people and that's why people keep coming back to my posts and to respond because they know that I'm going to reply them in a way that feels very real and in a way that feels very nice and approachable. Another thing that I can say that helped my growth on LinkedIn was interactive content formats. So I use things like polls, I use things like audio events just to communicate with my audience. At the time I was using LinkedIn Live, which was more of the video format, but ever since LinkedIn Audio came forth, I've been very consistent with LinkedIn Audio. And so that form of interaction really helped me with my audience. And I think the highlight of everything for me was creating stories and sharing things that people could relate to it. Now, when it comes to storytelling, how how do you structure your story? How do you pass across a message? 
I did this very well. And because of that, a lot of my audience were able to understand things I was saying. They felt it was interesting to them and they clicked the follow button. So sometimes I've shared stories about stories about how I got married, stories about how I got a new job, stories about my wins, stories about my failures. And because of this human touch, people were able to relate. And then they liked the post, it went viral, many of them over 80,000 impressions, a lot of following, and the brand just keeps growing. Then another one I think helped was also delivering education content, meaning that you're sharing content that are very educative and because people want to learn. So LinkedIn is way different from other platform because it's a professional platform. And so people come to that platform with the idea of they want to learn something new. And when you teach them things that they don't know, or you just bring their attention to things they don't really pay so much attention about, a lot of attention to rather, they are going to give you their loyalty. So all of these things encompassed together really help my posts. And it also helped my visibility on LinkedIn. And then the pictures I used because they were very professional and high quality. A lot of people really felt glued to my page. When it comes to my videos, I try as much as possible to make it engaging and interactive. I also used a lot of call to action because when you don't ask people questions, they might not want to, there might not be anything for them to relate to it. So when I make a post, I try as much as possible to add a good call to action, whether it can be a question or it can be for them to just drop in their opinions. And this way people can get glued to your page and then they can be able to answer the question that you have, which can improve your post visibility and also create and foster a good relationship with your audience in the comment session. So all of this and more other things, or more other tips like checking my insights, my analytics to see what kind of post works, what post does not work and trying to tailor my post in a way that suits my audience really helped my brand grow. And so that's it. So in summary, my journey to 200K followers really was impacted by me being authentic, by posting quality content. I was also active with engaging with people, responding to DMs, strategic networking, and also with a new passion for empowering others. And so because of this, a lot of people have found me worthy you know, to just click the follow button and it really, really means a whole lot to me. So there you have it. I was able to gain over 200k followers on LinkedIn. And if you try as much as possible to also use this strategy, you can see how far your brand can go. And remember, it's a journey. You don't just wake up to 200k followers in one day. It takes a lot of time for people to build trust. It takes a lot of time for people to want to understand what you're saying, for them to be able to buy into your vision. So you have to be patient. And in also being patient, you have to give value, value, value. So I hope you learned something new. And don't forget that I'm also having a webinar, like I said earlier in the beginning of this podcast. So the webinar is on the 14th of October by 10 a.m. prompts and you can get the link to the webinar on my profile at Damnala Felicia Badmos or you go to bit.ly slash capital letter R-B-A webinar. So bit.ly slash capital letter R-B-A webinar. I would also put the link in the description box. So please do well to register. And also don't forget to please rate this podcast, follow it so that more people can find it. You can also follow me on LinkedIn at Damalola Felicia Badmoss. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell people about this podcast. Don't forget to share it 
So take on your way in the next episode. Bye for now.